It's also really important to be aware of what stressful behaviour is. So the first thing you want to look at is the gills. If the gills are going really hard, then that would be an indicator of stress. If one fish gives another fish a chase and the other fish takes off and the fish is acting normally, like within seconds after the chase, this chase probably isn't a real big problem. On the other hand, let's say one fish chases another fish and that fish go and hides and you see it breathing like this, that would be an indicator that the fish is stressed. Now, fish stress kills. The same as what a lot of humans don't admit is that stress actually kills you because all animals, whether you be human or you be fish, when you're stressed, different molecular responses occur within the fish. So what happens, for example, is if you are stressed or your fish are stressed, then all of their energy goes into their fight or flight system, their respiration system, and it will come out of systems like their immune system. And that's why people end up dying from stress, not today, not tomorrow, but in the long run, they develop all sorts of problems that they shouldn't have ever had because they're too stressed. And that means their body and their immune system is not functioning properly. And that's the same with fish. And with the fish, you might say, oh, what have they got to be stressed about? But ultimately, they need good water quality. They need good quality food. And obviously, they need physical safety. So if you were going up and banging on the tank all the time and the fish were not stimulated by that and you saw the fish breathing heavily as a result of that, then that would be a really bad thing to do. And with the fish, when... Um, they are behaving in a certain way. If they start being erratic then and crashing into things, that, that's also very much a sign of stress. So knowing what your fish should do is actually really important for getting to know your fish. And ultimately, when you're watching your tank, try to watch them actively. So when you watch them, think about what you're watching. Like it's quite relaxing just to sit here and watch this yellow fish buzzing around. But it's also quite interesting to stop and think, what's he doing and why is he doing it? And paying attention to what he's doing versus what he normally does. Because once again, you can take a little video of that behavior, you can bring it down to the shop and it may prove to be something to be worried about or something not to be worried about. At the moment, these fish are looking like really good. They're not breathing heavily. They're not swimming erratically. Um, this is a, a very good sign. So providing that it carries on. Once again, if they start hiding a bit more, that's not going to be unusual. But if in doubt, bring us a video, bring us a water sample, and just don't feed these things too much. Keep the feed as low as possible. The other thing we're going to do with this aquarium is as these fish get bigger, and we're going to pay attention to some of these fish are not actually appropriate nor suggested for this aquarium, but they're still there. So when the fish grow, we're going to add an extra filter. The filter that I'm going to want to add, I'm going to add it in this corner here. I'm going to add an Aqua L Turbo um, 2000. The Turbo 2000 will give this tank very, very good water flow and will increase the biological filtration significantly. Because once again, you've got a certain number of fish here and those fish are going to produce waste. So things like your marine pure balls you can hide in the back. They're going that act like a compost heap. They're going to increase the biological capacity therefore allow you to have more fish because if you can have more bacteria then you can have more fish because we need the bacteria to break down the waste from the fish and in saying that we also need to make sure that when we're doing a water change i'll be doing a gravel clean to pull the, the dirt out of the gravel but what we don't want to do is go pull water out of the tank then throw water from the tap in then add the water ager because you can get a chlorine flush in the tank and the chlorine in the tap water may actually kill off your good bacteria and may end up killing off your fish. So it's much better to get a bucket, put the water ager in the bucket and then put the water into the aquarium. And also if you're going to fill up the aquarium itself, because let's say that your aquarium was too big and you actually didn't have the capacity to do it with a bucket, then if you go up five centimetres and then you treat the whole aquarium, then go up five centimetres, then treat the whole aquarium, then go up five centimetres and treat the whole aquarium, then we'll be in business. But once again, we need to be adding a water ager 
before we're adding new water. Otherwise, we're risking chlorine. And when I say risk, I mean as in like you can do it one day and have no problem. And you can do it another day and all your fish die. And that's because Sydney tap water doses chlorine and chloramine to a maximum minimum level, which means a lot of it comes down to your luck. If you do a water change on a bad day, it might be bad. If you do a water change on a low chlorine day, it probably doesn't make any difference. So once again, this aquarium also has a light. This light's actually pretty cool. So there's a little button there. I whack on the button, that makes it blue. I whack on the button again, turns it off. Whack on the button again, it goes white. So it's got the LED lights. And with an aquarium like this one, we're really wanting to reduce how often the light's on. So if you're out, it's better if the light's off. If you're asleep, it's better if the light's off. If you're enjoying your fish, turn the light on. But the less the light's on, then the, um, the less algae you're gonna get. And if you are getting algae, one of the best things you can ever do, assuming that you need this, by the way, because depending on your catfish, is get a flipper. So a flipper's like a razor blade on a magnet. It's unreal. And you go, doo, 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 and you clean your tank in two seconds. Actually, my interest in cleaning aquariums commercially before the flipper came out was like zero. Because I used to hate cleaning glass. Then I bought myself a flipper. And now whenever I go to a job, the thing I hated the most was cleaning the glass. And now I don't even mind doing it. You just grab your flipper, you just go like this. In no time at all, it's clean. And you've just done the thing you didn't even like the most. Um, so right now you can see the heater's on. The light, you see the light's on. That will just be on when the tank is below 25 degrees because it's currently set for 25. And then when the tank gets back up to 25, that light will turn off. And then we just need to make sure that heater is always plugged in. Unless it's out of the water, then it definitely has to be unplugged. So, so far everything is going absolutely to plan. But the things that we can do to stuff this up is feed them too much. Or get fish too early. Or clean our filter with tap water, not aquarium water. Or change too much water at a time. If it's summer, you can get away with almost a 50% water change. Better if you do less. It's like 40% is better. Then in winter, it's better off doing small water changes regularly because what can happen is you can shock the fish with a large water change and then um, you can end up in all sorts of trouble.